Ingredient number three, positive expectations. Really centered around three major points. Establishing absolute certainty that we believe the player can achieve something. The high expectations that they will achieve that at a high proficiency. And then confidence from the coach that the player feels that the coach believes that they absolutely will be able to achieve this. Uh, the best way I've found to describe it as, uh, in a short sentence, is high expectations with unlimited attempts. Uh, most coaches fall into the problem of having high expectations and a very short attention span or short amount of patience for players and give them very few attempts to achieve it before they're punished or the coach just gets frustrated and moves on if the player can't um, get past the point get over the threshold of where they're executing a skill with a minimum level of proficiency. Um, so in other words, we give your players certainty from the first moment we meet them that they not only can, but they will achieve mastery of the skill that we're setting out to address. It's only a matter of time for us and a matter of breaking down each skill component into a small enough chunk that the player can achieve success. So we are in charge of keeping the whole skill in mind and how it fits together and disassembling and reassembling, you know, as needed for the player to zoom in, as I've started to call it more recently, um, analogy I heard in another industry talking about teaching things in high definition where things are often vague and uh, foggy for anyone executing a physical skill, zooming in and teaching things in HD High definition is really what we're about. So, you know, looking at a piece of machinery in three dimensions and being able to blow it up and pull it apart in a mechanical drawing and put it back together is kind of how I think about basketball skills. That we're looking at where the player is and we know all the different pieces and how they fit together. We can blow that up, you know, zoom in on one really tiny piece and perfect that with the player. And again, we have a really high expectation that they're going to be able to achieve all of those pieces eventually, but we give them unlimited attempts to get there. And so taking it in, you know, one big, large piece, if it works for the player is great. If not, we're able to zoom in and pull pieces apart until we perfect all the little puzzle pieces that stack up to be the total skill package that we're working on. Um, and then having a lot of certainty and, you know, competence in our coaching staff, confidence in our own capability to be able to do that with any player at any level, at any age. You know, really, the more I've coached, the more I've discovered that even college players already playing on a college scholarship at a very high level still suffer from the same problems of you know vague coaching and approximate skill, you know, technical ability. And, you know, usually they're super athletic. If they made it to the college level, they've got a lot going for them, and so they can get by. And, uh, you know, coming to us and breaking down things at a really granular level, really zooming in, allows them to be more efficient and usually have, you know, better productivity and scoring, whatever they're trying to improve on. Um, but, you know, going back to the first point I made is giving that player that sense of certainty from the get-go, like really you know, how we approach them, how we're talking to them is, you know, we're totally expecting them to achieve a lot very quickly. And usually they do, you know, it's kind of, uh, any learner goes along with the teacher's expectations. And so, you know, where a lot of coaches let players down, in my opinion, is they expect them to fail. They're looking for mistakes to correct and they're yelling and punishing those mistakes. And so we kind of go about it the opposite way. And, meet the player where they're at, find out what they need, and you know, make it okay to make mistakes while we're working on the specific changes and corrections and improvements on a certain piece of skill. Like We often have to help the player be okay with missing the shot at the end of a complex mechanical skill they're working on until that skill becomes a little more fluid and uh, you know they achieve fluency with that then you know making the shot at the end becomes very easy when all the other pieces are worked out and so reminding them it's like let go of making the shot and just get your right knee above your hip when you're shooting a layup type of thing uh, and all that you know takes time but 
you know, again, the approach here of having positive expectations is that we are ahead of them. We know all the depth of detail we need to know to make, to help them achieve what they're working on. And we're pulling them up the hill, you know, showing them one piece at a time, one step at a time, what they need to, uh, to keep moving forward. Um, and, you know, as part of the unlimited attempts concept, you know, we don't leave them in the infinite loop of failure for very long at all. Like typically three to five repetitions is all we're looking for to, you know, really certify they've got that piece. And so, you know, if they fail three times in a row, we're going to not repeat that or let them stay in that point of failure. We're going to change it, adapt it, maybe describe it differently, or again, zoom in further and break it down into a smaller chunk until they can find a point of success where, okay, this now I can do. And then it's much easier to add the next piece and the next step forward you know, maybe zoom out to the next bigger chunk of that skill. Um, and then they don't really feel like they're failing. Like they may fail a lot, but we're only letting them have one or two or at a max three attempts where they fail before we change it. And then they basically fix what they were just failing at and now they can succeed at it. And so even though they go through a lot of failure overall across a whole practice session, it's always followed by the dopamine hit of, okay, now I got it, right? I, I screwed up, I failed, I didn't understand what this meant, I couldn't do it, and we broke it down and we backed it up, and now I got it, and now I got the next piece, and now, you know, that, that failure is gone in the past because, this, you know, my brain is eagerly looking at each piece forward that I keep stepping on and keep moving forward with. Um, and the, the level of precision with that is, uh, is a big factor. You know, if we have the, uh, have the high expectations for them to achieve a lot, it really comes down to the precision of instructions we can give them. You know, if we, we have this whole idea of you know, granular uh, pieces of a puzzle, you know, I talked about the mechanical 3D model kind of concept or analogy, we could be zooming in and looking at pieces, but without the ability to provide precise instructions on how to execute that, it doesn't really work. And so that's where the tag teach for uh, method comes in again, where we're giving our final instructions in five words or less. And then we're simply saying yes, if they can achieve that, if they can do the correct action. Um, and so when that is stacked on top of Again, having a lot of certainty as coaches that you can achieve this and having really high expectations that they're not going to just achieve a really basic skill, but they're going to achieve very advanced skills as they progress. And then the unlimited attempts, all of that works backwards to only function if we have really concise instructions in five words or less or and precise feedback where they're getting a yes, they're getting confirmation that they did what we asked correctly instantly on a, upon executing it. And a uh, really good concept I learned several years back from Tag Teach and from behavior science, uh, it's called back chaining where you start with the end point of a skill and you build each piece in front of that skill continuing through the end point on each repetition. So like on a layup, we start with the last two steps and get two step layup made, two step layup made, and then three steps with a dribble, and then a crossover into attack, three steps with a dribble, and all those pieces, you know, continually reinforce the end point. The last two steps remain the same all the way through that. And a uh, really powerful uh, progression for players to go through with this kind of approach of positive expectations. You know, we might show them a, a wrap around behind the back crossover into a tack dribble and even a advanced finish as, you know, a whole skill combination. And they might look at that like, oh my gosh, I've never tried any of those parts that go together and I have no idea how to start. But as soon as we zoom in and start breaking each of those down, they're like, oh, I can do that finish. Oh, I can do the footwork before the finish. I can do that dribble. I can do a wrap around and then that dribble and then suddenly they're doing the whole skill and uh, again we've been pulling them along like getting them leaning forward is a great way to think about it 
where that positive expectation is like, I expect you to achieve this, you know, I'm here to help you achieve this. And uh, again, having really high expectations for that and unlimited attempts and getting the player comfortable with that real understanding that it is actually unlimited attempts. Like we're not going to punish you for failure at any point. We're going to give you as many attempts as you need to achieve whatever piece we're working on. And we're going to have the next piece waiting for you as soon as you get there.